This is Twit. Now, in 1973, the FAA banned passenger airlines from supersonic flights over the U.S. And as Dan Vergano writes in BuzzFeed, it was seen as an early win for environmental groups. But now, sonic boom testing is starting again in Galveston, Texas. And Dan is here to talk to us about it. Thanks for coming on the show, Dan. Good to be here. Good to talk to you. So uh, the tests in the 60s were in Oklahoma City, and uh, they did not go so well. Talk a little bit about those tests. Uh, they were incredible. You couldn't do them now. They did uh, something like 1,500 sonic booms eight times a day uh, for six months over Oklahoma City, and they ramped up the intensity um, to, uh, over this time uh, to see how people would like it. Uh, they figured, you know, people would adjust. And... Uh, it turned out that they pissed people off. Uh, there were death threats. Uh, about a third of the population wanted to move. Uh, people wanted to complain to the Chamber of Commerce, to FAA, and everybody else. Uh, FAA concluded from this that, you know, people probably could live with the the, the early ones, which are quiet. Uh, nobody else thought that. The National Academy of Sciences said it's a bad idea, and the whole thing burst a uh, environmental movement opposed to noise pollution uh, centered around airplane noises. Hmm. So why are they doing it again now? What's different now? Right. So now we have better technology. Uh, <laughs> we are, have invented uh, low boom uh, aircraft. It's, in, it's actually incredible work that NASA has done. Uh, very careful, smart uh, sh sh shaping of the sonic boom waveform to spread it out into a thud. You still get the same energy of the boom, uh, but they've gotten longer planes with different doodads on them that, that lift and extend the boom so that it becomes more of a thud. And so they think that... Uh, Maybe if the sonic boom is the problem, then we can have uh, supersonic flight, which would be nice, faster flight uh, all over the country. And instead of a, like a cannon going off in your ear all at once, it's the sound of a car door uh, shutting overhead and it won't annoy people so much. Uh, it might be a problem, though, uh, for other reasons. Um, but the Galveston tests, which are starting this month, are basically a uh, month-long effort to simulate the, this low boom noise uh, and see how the people in that community react. So I imagine with the low boom uh, technology, if, if low boom technology is what this is, um, is is a matter of aerodynamics design of the plane. Are the, are the planes going any slower than what would have been a, no. like achieving a sonic boom prior? It's the same deal. They go faster to speed of sound. Uh, this one's designed to go uh, Mach 1.4, which at the altitude they're going at is uh, about 55,000 feet. It's about 950 miles an hour, which is, you know, a third faster than current uh, jetliners. And the trick is that the thing is uh, shaped like a pencil. So instead of a compact jet where all the sound waves, or I'm sorry, shock waves that are coming off the leading edges coalesce when they hit the ground with the longer shape, they don't get a chance to coalesce. And they've also added uh, cantilevered wings to the front that shape that boom a little bit to stretch it out and thump bumps on the back. And there's a cool set of second um, aerolons on the back tail that they sort of alter to shape the, to change the shape of the boom as the shocks are going in there. So it's all kinds of very complicated computational fluid dynamics that you have to do to get this to work. Um, but it, it does seem like it, it, they're very confident it would work, at least in the modeling, and they can get F-18s to do a dive that simulates uh, what the thump would sound like. They claim it can be less than 75 decibels. This is a loud conversation in a in a restaurant compared to a chainsaw going off in the ear like a regular sonic boom. Um, and so we'll see. The, but the real question, it turns out, isn't so much the technology, at least that's what we f found when we talked to NASA, which was so interesting. They said, well, the plane is hard, but the real thing is people. Like, will people accept this? It's a little bit analogous to the driverless cars question. Uh, you know, will people accept, a, you know, a car in the, in the street uh, that doesn't have a driver behind the wheel? Uh, will people accept the sound of this thud uh, even if it is quieter than a real sonic boom. Yeah, this is, I mean, so, so it's not heard inside the plane. Uh, if you're no. flying it, you don't, you don't hear it. So, and you're it's, going faster than it. You outrun it. Right. Right. So, I mean, it's kind of a, like, not in my, not over my backyard situation because it's an no, deal. Yeah. 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 So why Galveston? I mean, do they know I've, I've spent some time in Galveston. I grew up in Houston. That was where we would vacation. Do they know they're going to have these quieter than they used to be sonic booms, but still maybe noise pollution? It, that's the trick. The, the, the answer is that Galveston's on the coast, and so you can dive the plane off into, in from the ocean, and the ocean gets the boom. There's a nice map, and the city gets the thud. Mm. Uh, 
So it's a great place to do this kind of test with an F-18 to, to simulate what the thud noises are. So really the test isn't, can we do the thud? The, thud, the response is, what is the community's response to it? Mm-hmm. That's why you do it in Galveston. Also, it's a small city, so you can constrain, constrain the responses you get. Uh, you know, to do it over a giant city would be a problem. But uh, people in Galveston are being told about this, and they said they're probably going to overdo it a little bit in terms of how much warning they give them because they don't want people to feel like, what the, you know, totally like guinea pigs. Um, but there's a question, like, if you warn people too much, then every time a trash can falls off a truck, everybody calls into NASA, right? Uh, and if you do it too little, then everybody gets mad when they find out about it. So there's this balance that they're trying to go for, and they're trying to figure out what is the appropriate amount of warning to give a community because they're hoping in 2023 to test this over major cities with the X-59 that's going to be built next year. And they don't want to do that wrong because that'll be the real noise test of this thing. So obviously it's sonic boom, sonic thud, uh, their noise pollution uh, at, at yep. on one level. Uh, but is any of this unhealthy? Like, is it bad for people's health? Are they, are they concerned from that uh, level as well? The The sound, the decibel levels from the thud shouldn't be bad for people's health. Uh, you know, there have been past um, studies suggesting like, well, if you surprise people, they might have a heart attack, they might fall off ladders, things like this. But just in terms of raw sound, no. Uh, the the problem is the psychology, again, if you drive people crazy doing it uh, and they want to move and you depress the value of their house because it's in the flight path of one of these things, then that's not good for people. So it's more of a community response thing, a human psychology question in terms of harms than a raw, like, you know, punch in the ear kind of with a sound problem. And is the, um, is, is the plane itself better for the environment um, or is it worse for the environment? Are supersonic jets better or worse? It, it's, it's obviously worse. Mm-hmm. It costs, um, it, it takes more fuel to, to go faster. That's just how it is. Uh, they can make low emissions engines compared to the past, compared to the Concorde, which is a very high emissions uh, aircraft. Um, the Concorde, I'm sure your, your viewers are familiar with, was the English and French plane that flew across the ocean until 2003. Um, but you still got to burn more fuel to do this. And so the question is like, okay, they're, they're more efficient than they used to be, but they're still burning more fuel to, so some plutocrats can go from Los Angeles to New York faster. Is that a great thing for our environment, especially after 2023, you know, 10 years from now, even before they really get these things ginned up, are people then going to be so uh, happy with, uh, you know, a source of pollution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you pointed out in your article, I um, thought it was kind of interesting, the the kind of layers of complication around, you know, the environmental uh, factors here is that on one hand, yes, it, it might actually not be very good for the environment. But at the same time, if you've got just these, you know, this small amount of people flying these instead of, you know, on the, on the larger planes, uh, right. you know, impacting that so much more, then it might actually be okay for the environment. Right. So who knows? Yeah, if it's just a couple of plutocrats, then yeah. it's not so much. But if everybody's on one the size of a 747, then yeah, that's a lot of emissions. Yeah. So yeah, you know, what's the what's the right answer there? Um, and it's also important to point out that you know there is a story that the Concorde was killed by the boom it made, and you know this question of of emissions and costs, you know, is if fuel is you know, running really expensive a gallon, is this thing going to work on, uh, economically? Sure. Those are the kind of like hard questions that really determine the future of like aircraft success or not.